Okay, quick Q&A um, for Chem 343. We're doing project number three. They've been collecting, students have been collecting NMR data remotely on a Bruker 400 megahertz NMR system at the Magnetic Resonance Research Center at Arizona State University. And they're moving on to, uh, after they've collected this data, queued up data, uh, remotely accessed it and, and started various experiments. What do you do with the data now? Can you process it on the remote system? Is that okay? You know, while the remote system is running, should you do something else? The short answer is yes, you can process it on the remote system, but it's not advisable. The, uh, the best route is to use the remote system for just accessing it and collecting the one thing that it can do that you can't do any other way, which is you need that remote system which is connected to the NMR to collect the data. But you can use any computer for the processing and the analysis. So it's typically more advisable so that you're not, multiple people aren't trying to get onto the system while one's trying to process the data, somebody else is trying to get on and run it, etc. We should free up the instrument just to be, you know, used with ICON NMR for automation and remote running and then just pull off your data and do all of the data processing and analysis on your own system or you know, on a cloud system, et cetera, that isn't um, a dedicated system for the remote thing. So let's look at this more explicitly. We can use AnyDesk to get onto um, the remote Bruker 400. This is a live view of samples that are being run. You can see one is it being run right now. Um, so there is something being run, but yes, we can come here, uh, we can go over to Topspin and we could, you know, pull up uh, data that is being run right now. If we log this, you'll see these are the data files that are being run right now. Um, and, you know, we can look at it. And so there you go. Like, so. This is what's being run right now, this set, and we can Yeah, we could analyze this. These are blowing up the two methods. But you see how it's even slow? I'm logged in remotely and it's kind of lagging and and stuff. I mean, this is one of the disadvantages. I mean, you're kind of you know, you have to have a good internet connection, you're pulling back all these graphics. The more advisable way is not to use uh, top spin remotely to try to analyze this, but to get your own copy. So I, you can get free academic um, co uh, copies as a student of top spin, register at Bruker and, you know, get this software loaded on your own system. They have versions for Windows, Mac, and PC, and use the exact same software that's here However, I would argue that it's even easier to, you know, it, this NMR software can be, you know, challenging to learn. It's powerful, but, you know, it can be challenging. You can use a lot of other things by getting it off of this computer and uh, onto something else. So, uh, so yes, that kind of shows you that you can do that. Uh, but let me show you a couple other things. So one is you can see that in automated mode, it points to a certain directory, and that's where we were you know, looking this uh, uh, D drive spring 2020, you know, that's where we're looking here. In fact, this is how you kind of refresh it to see what's going on. So this is all the data that's being collected, you know, on this Bruker D drive, etc. Now, instead of looking at it in Topspin, we're gonna just look at it in a file explorer here. So this is again, the D drive Bruker 400, here's spring, you know, it's the data, Kim343. So you go through these subdirectories and this is now, you know, the data that's, um, you know, been collected. So, um, so what I'm even going to do uh, just to show you that this is possible, I'm going to um, delete these and show you kind of how I got them. So if what you want is you can take these, these entire directories here and just move them to a cloud lab. So um, this is a Google Sheet showing what the samples are, uh, but this is for the course, Chem 343. This is you know the Google account, and we're in Google Drive, 
and we are in project three where we could, you know, take this data right here and, you know, move it over, right? Like, and copy it over and it would copy. Now, um, the thing that's not so advisable about this, it's advisable to first zip it before you move it over. And so how do you do that? Well, if you right click and then go to send to compress zip folder, now it'll name it the same thing, but dot zip. And in that new folder, it has everything. It has all the subdirectories that were in this original folder. So everything drilled down, all of this P data, um, et cetera, is all, you know, in there. So it's all in the zip file. So it's more advisable to zip it and then transfer it over. Um, so I've already done that once before, but they, you know, so now we have a copy of it in zip and then to unzip it, once you've copied it onto your own computer, um, you can extract it and it'll extract out. And that's just a safer way to know that you've transferred these files and that nothing's gotten lost, et cetera, is to compress it and zip it and then unzip it. It's, uh, so, you know, that's uh, the first advisable thing. But then, um, you know, what, what could you analyze it in? Well, let's show you this. Like uh, you can just save it as ASCII. So the data, the process data by default, if we go into it, into experiment number 10, this is P data stands for process data. So this is the FID, the free induction decay, the raw data, but it automatically does some processing and you can process it in numerous ways. And one R is the real process data, but it's in a binary format. And so what we'd like to do is have this in, um, is to have this in an ASCII format, right? So let's go to that experiment 10. This is that process data. Let's just show it all. And then the way you can do that is use this macro. Um, this stands for, um, uh, you know, it's going to convert binary to ASCII. So ASCII uh, to text. So when we do that and it says it's finished, we'll see now we have this ASCII spec text file. So now we have it in ASCII format and we can import that, which I've done here. There's four columns, the points, the intensity, it gives you the x-axis in Hertz and in PPM. And then I plotted the uh, PPM versus intensity here. I need to get rid of this y-axis component to make it look more like what you would see with NMR, but it's kind of on its way to looking like a figure that you could use for, for NMR. So you could analyze it in something like Google Sheets or Excel as well, but it's harder to do some integrations and stuff like that. What I actually advise is something like NMRium, which is an in-browser thing. And since you already have it zipped, it accepts zipped Bruker files, which is also what Spentropy uh, does. So if we have something that's already zipped, let's go back to our Kim 343. So this is a zipped file. We can drag it over and you could do this on your own local system once you have them all. And there you are, there's the data. And this is really designed for NMR so that we can come, um, you know, blow up this area. Uh, these are the two methyls. So we would say want to integrate these um, we could go to integrate here uh, and be able to, you know, integrate these peaks, um, you know, et cetera. So, so this is really, uh, you know, designed as an in-browser uh, NMR processing and, or, or yeah, processing and analysis stuff. And so um, once you have the system on your, you know, we are doing this remotely, but it'd be advisable that you, get the uh, zip files onto your own computer and then do this in a browser on your own local computer. So hopefully that gives you several examples of how you would get the data, how you could compress it, how you can get it off onto a cloud system and onto your own computer. The other way that is common if you're using, um, uh, 
AnyDesk is it has a file uh, management and transfer. So you can hear this is my local directory and this is um, you know, the, the Bruker system. So here I could go to uh, you know, the D drive and Bruker 400, um, 2022, data, Kim 343, NMR. So here's, for example, some of the data. And then I could go anywhere, you know, the most common would be like downloads directory. And I could go down to a downloads directory on my own computer that I'm uh, on right now going into AnyDesk. And I could take these and I could either download them uh, I can move the zipped files I have, etc. So this has, you know, I can move this zip file, um, you know, over there. Uh, sorry. So I could, you know, get this zip file and download it, and then it'll take it and it'll put it onto my, yeah, you know, into the directory I'm in over here. So, so that's another way you can do it if you're logged into AnyDesk. So that hopefully gives you quite a few ways, either upload it to a cloud. Uh, you, Zip uh, exists by default on both Mac uh, and Windows systems without installing any software. It's part of the operating system. So hopefully that gives you quite a few ways to, once you've collected the data, some of the next steps to downloading on your own system, processing it with uh, several different ways you can process and analyze the data.